histamine is part of the stress or inflammation response. I mean, it can cause, it can cause clots. It can cause cells to get more sticky. It can cause um, your lungs to constrict a little bit more. It can cause more swelling and fluid retention. It can open up the blood vessels partly because imagine if you bang your elbow, right? What happens? Does, does it get more swollen or less swollen? It gets more swollen. Why? Because of the inflammatory response, it's driving vasodilation, meaning it's opening up the blood vessels. Why? Well, to help bring the immune cells there to help kind of get the inflammation and recovery process under control. So the problem is a lot of these mechanisms, they're acute punctuated mechanisms, they're on, then they're off. With chronic inflammation in the system through gut or other hormonal imbalances, it's on and then it stays on. And then now that it's on, certain foods that may have been a, may have not have been a problem before now perpetuate the problem. Does that make yeah, sense? It so does. it becomes this vicious cycle where like, yeah, you may be fine. You, you should be able to have some kombucha and some bacon. But now because of the inflammation, now that bacon's a trigger. Now the kombucha's a trigger. Now the citrus fruits are a trigger. Now the, the good avocados are a trigger. And it's like people are pulling their hair out. They're like, what is going on? I don't get it. These are good foods. What's happening? And they have to look deeper at, of course, you know, well, we look at the symptoms. The first thing I do is I say, okay, let's try cutting some of these histamines out of our diet food wise. Do we feel better? Yes or no? That tells me something. And if, if that helps, then we look at, okay, let's work on better digesting our foods. Number two, let's work at gut infections because we know the microbiome, if out of balance, can really create these abnormal histamine responses. And we know how the microbiome is so important with gut permeability and that increases autoimmune issues hence thyroid, hence adrenal, hence gut issues, irritable bowel disease. So everything can just really spiral out of control if the microbiome is not there, if the food's not there. And of course, if stress is not is, is there, we know what the sympathetic nervous system response does in regards to burning up our B vitamins and, and, and decreasing HCL and enzymes and decreasing dopamine and adrenaline over time. And then we also know that certain nutrients are gonna be vital for histamine, for making the enzymes to break down histamine, right? We know certain enzymes, the DAO enzymes really important. And we know vitamin C, we know copper, we know B6. B6 gets burnt out so much during stress. It's very important for our neurotransmitters. Um, and we also know that um, if we have low stomach acid levels and we're stressed, we'll be burning them up at a much higher level. And we know that um, when our gut microbiome is, is out of balance, we have more bad stuff than good stuff. We know that the bad microbes will be eating those nutrients versus making it. And we know those bad microbes will be actually making more histamine byproducts as well. So it's this double edged sword. When the gut's out of balance, we eat the nutrients we need to break down histamine. The bad bacteria makes more of the histamine. And then we don't get a lot of those nutrients absorbed that help us make the enzymes to degrade histamine. It's a, it's a triple edged sword. 